Hello, this is Evan Rogerson, and I'm Motor Gang here, and today we're going to be talking about H-Drives. So before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm, and let's get to it. So an H-Drive is a tank drive using all Omni wheels, and then additionally you also have one wheel that is perpendicular to the other wheels. Um, so this needs its own motor. You can see uh, I'm in VexU, so we have a nine motor drivetrain right here. So that's the extra motor just powering this guy, and then the rest of it's just an eight motor drive. Uh, these are 3.25 inch wheels if you're curious and that is 450 rpm and this guy is actually powered at 100 rpm which we will get to in a little bit so the idea behind each drive is i can still move like forwards backwards i can still turn like normal but then additionally i can also spin that extra wheel in order to move my robot sideways um, which theoretically can be very helpful for lining your robot up like especially with this year's game the original reason we originally did it was to help line up with the long goals to, and center goals to avoid needing an aligner because um, it is kind of handy just to be able to move sideways. Um, this is similar to drives like an X drive or a Mechanum drive. However, since you only have one motor powering your horizontal movement, it's going to be either much slower have, or have much less torque. So since this is like an eight motor drivetrain, gets really fast acceleration. And this guy, he only has one motor. So you'll notice it still has like not the worst acceleration ever. Um, we'll get to that later, but in order to get decent acceleration, we have to be running a red motor cartridge right there. So that results in this spinning at only hundred RPM, which I believe is a linear speed of about 17 inches per second. So you can't use this like an X drive. You would to like strafe across the entire field. You can only really use it for like small alignments, which is definitely one of the downsides. Another fairly obvious issue with an H drive is, uh, you need an extra motor. So for VRC, when you have like motor limits, also don't mind the radio. Um, when you have a motor limit, it can be hard to justify the extra motor for this guy. Also add a bunch of extra structure into your robot. This might be overbuilt. I don't know. There's not really anyone else building H drives out there to go and reference, but we just did like four C channels, basically. Um, one of which was already like a full length cross brace. And then we have like a smaller five wide, um, and another smaller five wide in there. Uh, you can kind of see the base of it. In order to mount it at a specific height, we used a two wide inside there. And then we have some spacers inside there. So you'll notice this is actually not centered. Originally we did have it centered, but that actually didn't end up working very well. I believe this is dropped down 1 16th of an inch because that's a quarter inch right there. And theoretically we'd want another quarter inch on the other side because um, right there we have quarter inch going down and quarter inch going up on those, which is also why we have the really, really, really fun um, spacing on the 48 tooth gear right there that, uh, it doesn't hit guys it's it's clear clearance is a boolean um so that's why that exists it's originally had the center and that is powered in the bottom hole you can see the shaft right there i think that bearing might be a little bit loose um but you can see these are also the 450 has bottom hole anyway so that's kind of how we came up with that spacing but yeah we added an extra 16th of an inch there with the washers and took out a 16th of an inch there so that's like an eighth plus a 16th that's a quarter plus a 16th to drop this down. And we had various versions where we tried it. Originally we tried it just level, but that actually couldn't strafe at all. The reasoning behind that being this did not have enough traction with the ground. We then tried dropping it an eighth of an inch and I'll put up the video there. It was quite funny because like this wheel had good traction, but your other drive base wheels did not. And then we finally ended up settling on 16th inch in between, and that seems to work decently well. You'll notice that, yes, sometimes it does kind of get uh, stuck like that, where the wheel just doesn't have traction with the ground. You can see in there, it's just kind of slipping in there, um, which is why you would want a bit more weight. This is not a full robot. If you did have a full robot, uh, as simulated by this brick, then you'll see that you actually have enough traction to strafe a little bit more consistently. Okay. But now we get into the other issue with the H-Drive, which is center of mass. If your center of mass is not on this line somewhere, so really you have to get it to the point that's centered on the wheel. If it's not there, you're gonna have issues and you're not gonna strafe straight. You're more gonna do like a wide turn. When the center of mass is really far forward, 
like on this guy right here, you can see the robot turns a little bit around some point that would be like way over there. Um, because it's basically your center of mass is up here. So you're pivoting around it basically. Um, we didn't really have this issue on our actual 24 inch robot when this had like structure because that had more weight at the back. So it was more evenly distributed. Um, but I just kind of have to add the brick because like it can't strafe at all without it. It still gets like decent acceleration. Um, not the best, but also not the worst. Um, it's more of a traction issue than a torque issue, I think. Um, so I think the biggest issue with H-Drive is just getting consistent traction with this wheel on the ground and getting that in your center of mass. Those things are both really hard to tune. You could probably have some sort of way to like do a tensioner so that it had even tension with the ground, but that sounds like that would be a lot of extra work for what it's worth. Like I said, kind of hard to justify H-Drive. Um, when comparing it to another robot, here's the Jayhawk 15 right there. Um, this wheel does not really take away the traction. I'm going to kind of put them in a pushing matchup against each other. Oops. Um, and you can see when they both kind of drive backwards. Nobody's really winning that pushing match there. So it's not like that wheel. These guys both actually have identical tank drive specs. 458 motor, 3.25. Um, although if we were to try and like strafe up against it, you'll notice that the strafing... Even though it has like roughly similar torques, um, I'll put up the percentage of torque. Like it's within the same order of magnitude for sure. The percentage of torque of this drive, this wheel just does not have the traction to really even resist pushing at all. You can see when I strafe into this guy, that guy can pretty easily push this robot around. Yeah, you can see there, this guy is not going even remotely full power right here. Um, like, here, I'll drive this guy forward. You can see this guy. The H-Drive, he's going, like, full throttle, pushing into that guy. This guy, I just have to, like, pull the stick back a little bit, and he goes. So, really, doing an H-Drive provides you zero resistance to pushing. You would be better off running, like, traction wheels. Um, so, that's something that we thought might happen, but... Definitely would not recommend it for match play as you basically get zero resistance to pushing. Um, so yeah, there's not really a whole lot of benefits to running an H drive. Um, it's a lot of extra work. And yeah, you can kind of see in there, just getting the spacing in there is awkward. Um, doesn't really give you much extra maneuverability. And yeah, has high cost if you're in VRC for the motors. So if you do want to run holonomic, I would probably recommend doing like X or Mechanum drive if you're dead set on it. I like X drive probably a little bit better than Mechanums, although I've also used them significantly more. So if you guys have any questions, uh, be sure to comment them down below and I'll try and get back to them. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you in the next one.